to our first version of um, catching up with ex-students who have played football at a level here in this high, high le level here in Australia and also overseas. The first person I would like to introduce for you into this series is Theo McCullis. Theo was a student at Killer Downs College from 2004 to 2008. I had the pleasure of teaching him in mathematics, year 10, but also um, having him seen, uh, seen him play and represent the school since year seven in the school soccer teams. Um, just a little bit of insight into Theo. Theo, I believe, started his football as a junior at Green Gully, moved on um, to Valencia in 2008, where he was he actually was there given a two-year contract with the Valencia Football Club. And then from there, moved back, uh, came back into Australia to Melbourne Victory for a while. Then went back to, uh, played, went back to Italy, as well, into Italy as well, and played for Vincenzo, I believe, Serie B. Mm -hmm. yep. And then yep. came back, okay. Came back to Australia, had a crack at also at Veria in Greece in 2014. And then 2015, he's been back in Australia playing it in the NPL with Hume City. So welcome, Theo. We appreciate the time that you've given us for this, this uh, probably this inaugural and first day interview with ex-players. Um, so without a, without, a, without a doubt, um, you've been one of, our, one of our successful players that have come well, out of our school. We didn't have a soccer promo at the time, but have basically played football here in Australia, but also overseas. Um, what we'd like to do is uh, have a candid discussion with you, Joe and I, and just yeah. see what your experience was like as a professional footballer overseas and also your beginnings here in Australia and how you found it uh, moving away from home and doing your football, uh, your, fo your football training and your football um, career overseas, okay? So yeah. I'll yeah. hand it over to you. So well, first you of all, thanks, thanks for having me, guys. It's a pleasure. Um, yeah, look, um, as you said, you know, I was a student of yours at Kildowns College. Um, I was probably the, the best math student you could have. <laughs> um, but, but, um, but yeah, no, it's, uh, I've had a, have a, have had a, you know, a up and down journey in my, my career, you know, a bit ups and downs, but, um, at the end of the day, I take it as, as, as an up, you know, like, um, the experience that I had, you know, a lot of kids would love, would love to have. Um, but yeah, as you said, I, um, I joined Valencia about 16 years old and, um, yeah, that, that there was the breaking point. There was, um, the, probably the, the most, you know, experience I've ever had, you know, I mean, uh, my best mate, um, is Isco plays for Real Madrid. And, uh, you know, to, to start from there, was the, just to let you know the type of players that I was, I was there with, um, you know, we, we became, uh, really, really good friends. And, um, the fact that we, we lived together with his family and um, that was that was just unreal. And um, yeah, so I was in the Valencia youth system, you know, started off quite well. And then, you know, it came to a point where I was getting to, um, you know, the, the reserve team. And then I, I thought, um, you know, it's going to be difficult to break in the first team here, you know. So after Valencia, I did actually go to Vicenza straight after. I didn't come back yet. Okay. And um, yeah, so that was, I was around 18 years old then. And um, yeah, I was had a Serie B contract in the first team, still playing with the reserves, obviously, and getting in, getting into the, into the senior team. And unfortunately, um, I had done a re-knee construction or an ACL, which that sort of, um, you know, held me back, you know, and at that point at the time, I was really excelling in, in, in my career, you know. Um, and then, yeah, so that set me back a bit. And then, I fortu fortunately, I got, I got a call from, um, you know, uh, Ange Postacoglu uh, when he was a coach at Melbourne Victory. And um, again, you know, that was, that was a great experience in the A-League. And then, again, I'd, I'd played a few games. And then, you know, things didn't go my way with, you know, playing and plays that were there. It was a bit hard. And I had another injury. Um, but all in all... Uh, you know, it was, uh, I mean, growing up and, you know, leaving home, as you said, at 16 years old was, was really tough, you know, from, for my family and for myself too. But at the end of the day, um, it was something that I wanted to do and I don't regret anything that's, that's, that's happened, you know? So, yeah. 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 
just a little insight. Um, in terms, I remember you because well, it was just by luck. Um, you used to live across the road from us back in yeah. back in East Kill. Yeah. Yeah. I remember you. You basically had a ball at your feet pretty much every day. I remember every you day. come across. You were about five. You come across into our front yard and have a kick with my. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. Three. Um, just just go through as a junior footballer because obviously. The way uh, football is structured now in Australia is completely different to when you came through the junior system back then. And obviously, mm -hmm. uh, you're aware, I've spoken to you about it, the program that we have at our school now with our students. That didn't exist back when you were at school. Nah, no, no way, no way. When, well, when I was at school with you, Kata, you know, there was, there was no program. There was nothing. It was just that whenever we had inter-school sports, something, you would just pull a team together and, um, and just go and play, you know, which that was a bit disappointing because... I mean, back then there was no there was no structure, as you said, and I'm glad that you guys are doing that, and that's and, and I mean it's good for the youth, you know. And I mean, as you said, you know, I had a ball every day at my feet, and that that's all I can do because because there was nothing else. No one no one was behind me to try to do training every day and 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 stuff like that. So back in my day, it was just it's either you got it or you want it for yourself. And like no help really, so it was either you know your own talent, and there was no. I mean, I guess you could you can train kids to to be to excel. You know, you, you got that advantage now where you could help them. Back then, there was no really there was no really help. Um, you know, doing doing that. So it's great that 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 you've got that program going. You know. Yeah. Um, just one other thing. What? Because coming through the junior ranks, obviously. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I mean, you came through the Green, Gull Green Gully and you're playing there. Okay. What, what, what was the drive behind you? What was driving you to get to that level that where you knew that one day well, I want to get to a level where I could play professional football? Well, yeah, to, to be honest, um, as a junior, I was always more advanced than the other, the other boys, you know, and I was scoring a lot of goals and, you know, I played for the Victorian state team and finished top goal scorer in Australia in the, in the Coffs Harbour and all that sort of thing. But I forgot to mention that the, the way I did get overseas was um, through an academy called Jedham International School of Soccer. That's uh, run by Morris Pangiello, who's a really, really good friend of mine. And um, so that's, that's, I think that at that point is where he, he tried starting to do what you guys are doing in terms of getting, you know, a group of boys together, trying to get uh, coaches from, from Europe to, to come down here and show, show the Australian people how, you know, how things are done there. And so what happened was I had joined that, joined that academy and um, I was the youngest at the time as well. I was about 14. And um, yeah, I went, went over to Italy and we played a, Teams like Juventus, Roma, Lazio, you know, Torino, stuff like that. And that was just a big, big wake up call. And um, I think from from then on, that's when you know scouts would come to the games and you know see you know what what Australia really has to offer. And back then it wasn't much, yeah. you know. So, well, so that's sorry. a really yeah. Yep. No, that's it. Yeah, that's, that's when um, you were over there at that age, and you were talking about fourteen, and you you um you played against those those big teams that you were talking about. What was the what was the difference between the football that you found with the, the students of similar age for you over there in Europe compared to the sort of player you were I mean, here? They, they they lived and breathed football every day. Lived and breathed it. You know, that was it. Um, I mean, at that age, training four or five times a week was was unreal. Like you know, here, I would train twice. You yes. know, and it was just for fun, really. Like it was just, you know, Tuesday, Thursday training, go play on the on the Sunday, you know. And yeah. there it was just they were more, you know, more into it. They were already already being professional footballs from that age. You know, and that was a big a big stepping stone there, just seeing that. And the and the way their academies ran and how professional they were with just even like the small things like their kits, you know what I mean? Like their, their training gear, their, you know, their, how they, their, they're coached and, you know, like all the equipment they had was just un, unreal. Yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah, just, I was just going to talk about the transition to Valencia. So, um, you would have come from, like you just said, a couple of nights a week training here and anything private that you did yourself to get right for it. Did you find yeah. that it was a big adjustment for you to go into that oh, environment? Of course, of course. It was like from from exactly right from trying to do two, three nights a week training to training five times a week plus a game. It was just unreal. And plus, would have to I'd have to go to school in the mornings there, and then come home from school and train and repeat that five days a week. And um, 
yeah, at that age, and plus the, the language barrier was difficult to it to start, you know, I had, had no idea what was going on. And, you know, as a kid that age, going there by yourself, not knowing, not having any friends and not knowing the language, which made it even more difficult. And as you said, you know, the transition from, from training that much to that much was unreal, you know? What did you, and what obviously, you, what did you learn about yourself from it? Like as a person growing like that would have been a really quick way to grow up by yourself away from your family. Oh, hundred, yeah. I, I, I became an adult at 16 years old, to be honest. That's, that's the truth. I became an adult. And then that's a, you know, that's exactly what I, that, that's what I learned, but it was more the experience and be doing things by yourself. And at that age, I was getting paid good money too. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like where do you hear 16 year olds getting paid, you know, good money. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, I, exactly as I said, like I felt like an adult and I had responsibilities and you know, it, it's, it was so serious that it wasn't just like every kid having to go playing. It was like, Hey, if you train good enough, you're playing. If not, you're on, you're on the bench. Uh, you know what I mean? So there was no, you know, like here, yeah, everyone gets a turn and it wasn't, it was never like that. You know, did you have to prove yourself every day? Just touching on that bit about having that knee injury. Okay. Obviously it would have been a setback and, a lot of footballers, you know, always, you know, a lot of footballers will have setbacks in their career, okay? Yeah, yeah. How did you find, how did you, how did you overcome the mental side of things of getting your body? Oh, that was, yeah. I was going to, I was going to touch on that. Playing at the yeah, highest level gonna, again. I, know I was going to touch on that as well. Yeah. Um, see, a lot of players, I've seen a lot of players do those, get those big injuries and they just never come back from it. Um, but I've always been that type of person to have that strong personality. Like even look, it was a hard time, right? You know, doing the rehab was difficult, you know, like trying to get back to what you were. And I even had doubts. I had doubts as well. saying I'm never going to be the same. I'm like, you know, but then as soon as you overcome that fear, when you come back, then I guess, I guess it's your own, it's your personality at the end of the day. And I, I think if, if that happens to anybody, you know, having like I think mentally you have to be strong and um, you know, try be like you know whatever happened happened. I don't care if it happens again. That that's the mentality you have to go in with it. That yep. to overcome your fear, like you can't be scared of saying, oh maybe for I can't go on a fifty fifty challenge or I can't do this because I'm scared I'm going to get hurt again. No, you, you can't you can't have that mentality or else you're never going to succeed. To be honest. Yep. So yeah. Yeah, I was just going to talk to you a little bit about um, what did you, when you were growing up with these players, you mentioned Isco was one of the boys that you grew up with at, at Valencia. And I, yep. we saw it ourselves firsthand with Atletico Madrid with our kids. Um, there's 23 in that squad and it's cutthroat, like you said. How many of yep, those guys yep. progressed on to senior football that you know of from your generation? Well, luckily, the, the, the funny thing is I was lucky because um, the team that I had, the team where, where I got into, um, that was probably probably one of the, the best youth teams in Europe going on at the time. We had like plays like um, Isco in our team, Paco Alcacer. I don't know if you know who that is. He was at Barcelona yeah. and now he's at Villarreal. Um, uh, Roger, Roger, he plays at Levante first team. Uh, Carlos Hill played in the Premier League. So there, <laughs> there was uh, another player, Porto. Um, he plays at Sporting Gijón in the La Liga. So we had about six, six boys, six, seven boys that... Um, that progressing to playing, you know, a really high level. doesn't mean that every team that happens with every player. No, I was just lucky in, in my team. I had those players that, you know, got, to, you know, succeeded. But um, the big one was Isco. And we, we still, to this day, um, we still talk. Uh, I went, when was it last year when the borders were open, obviously, when there was none of this COVID, um, you know, I went to his house in Madrid, you know, stayed there with him. And um, yeah, actually named his son after me. <laughs> he has got a son. He's called him Theo. Nice. So that's how. Um, yeah, yeah. That's, that's that was. I just had to throw that out there. Um, <laughs> Could have called him Kenneth. Um, <laughs> yeah. So there was a few boys that that are playing at elite level at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. And do you remember? It's probably uh, probably a hard thing because you're now 28. Yeah. So you would have been 16 then. Did you start to see signs of guys that were that had something different about them? Not so much skill level, but that desire, like yourself as well, to keep going and battling and getting to senior football. Did you see differences in some that were just there for the ride? Um, of course, there was always um, there was always players, you know, that that were there and they just didn't really care. But I mean, they they put in the work. But you could just see, as you said, like the desire to to go the extra step. Yeah, of course. 
and there were players that that didn't have that that desire, which could have succeeded as well. Um, but I mean, the, the the football then I think was a bit different. It was more based on your technical and your talent, technical ability and talent, which now it's more a bit physical. You know what I mean? So like, the difference is you could have the talented play now. But if you don't work hard, you're never going to get there. Which, uh, I'll give you an uh, example again. Isco, at, at, at that age, he was physically not there. He was overweight, but his talent was just through the roof. And obviously, I mean, going to the first team, uh, they, they get you right, obviously. But, but that's, it's, it's, just, um, it, it's just a different ball game at the moment. And, and I think now, in this day, as, as a kid, I mean, as a youth player, you really, really got to put in the work. And physically, you know, you've got to be fit, match fit. all different types of running and compared to back then. I mean, I'm sure you guys would understand what I'm saying, you know, like yeah, probably definitely. you guys know football and you know the differences. Yeah. Theo, when you came back to Australia and you obviously got signed by Andrew Melbourne Victory, um, what, was the, what was the biggest difference you found between the A-League? Everybody talks about European football over there and they talk about the A-League being a young league and whatever. Okay, mm -hmm. what was the biggest difference that you found? What were the biggest adjustments you had to make as a footballer to fit into, the, the, I suppose, the playing style, obviously, of the team, but I also being a player that could sort of match. Because a lot of players come back and they say, oh, I played at the highest league overseas. I'll be right when I get back and I'll play in the A-League and, you know, exactly. so to speak. And that's not the... We don't see that's that. That's not the case at all. It's not the, See, a lot of people get mistaken by the A-League. People say, you know, the A-League's terrible and all these things, which... I've been in the A-League system. And to be honest, we, there is some talented players in Australia. There really is. And um, I was lucky enough to be with Ange Pustlecogli because, I mean, at that point he was probably the best coach going around, and um, it wasn't it was a shock. It wasn't a shock, but it was different because that was when I really started playing senior football, apart from Italy. Yeah. Um, but at the end of the day, if you're in a professional environment, no matter where you are, it's all the same professionalism, if that makes sense. So, at Victory, we're training twice a day, five days a week. Sometimes you get what I'm saying, just like they do in Europe. Yep. The only difference is the youth systems here are a bit wrong. Yes. Um, you get we're not we're not coached the right way. We're not brought up the right way. But in terms of being at the professional level with, with, in the A League, I mean they, they try to do the same things as what Europe do: train every day, be professional. You know. Um, but yeah, again, at the end of the day, here in Australia, again, at that point, that's where this physically demanding sport started kicking in as well. Like, I mean, in the A League, it was more. How much can you run? How 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 like how strong can you be? Because it, I think in Australia that's what we're good at in terms of more technical ability wise, and yeah. I think we focus the wrong thing is we focus more on that than our actual technical ability. Because as I said, we do have we do have players here that that are gifted. We do. Yeah. So yeah, it's a good point. I was just going to say to you. So if you if you go back to your youth, you would have been. Because you're not a tall guy now, so you would have been a smaller player. You would have had to use your brain, your skill, your technique exactly to get right. out of situations. Yep. And then as yep. you got older, when your body caught up physically, you were able to use other things like speed, yeah. acceleration, yes. like power, yeah? Yeah, yeah that's how, right. How important yep. is that then, do you think, for kids to really focus on now? Because there are a lot more distractions maybe than when you were growing up. You know, PlayStation, social media. Um, oh, yeah. Look, yeah. What do you think about that? Yeah, look, I mean... It depends where you like. If you if you're talking about an Australian point of view, then um, I mean, if you're just talented and you don't work hard, then I, I don't I don't think you're gonna you're gonna get to where you want to be. Um, and that, as you said, you got distractions like the Playstations and all that stuff, which we had that back then as well. But we 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 did all those things, but also worked hard. If that if that makes sense. So we made balance of both of both sides of, of life, which you know here that, that as I said the the just the system here and, and the youth system here is not like it is in Europe where there you're training every day but here you're not and then you get distracted by these things. Yeah. Um, do, do you get what I'm saying? So back then it was more easy if you're like again I always go back to technical ability and talent because that's that's where I saw and that's where I grew up in um, that that could get you over the edge. But now you need you need both. <laughs> you need both. He doesn't just work as yeah. You could be the most talented ever, but if you can't run ninety minutes, then who's? Why would a coach, you know, pick you over someone that that can do the same thing you can and 
and last that long, if that makes sense. So what I'm trying to get at is, I think you, you need to be a bit more determined mentally and physically here and train even harder because now in Europe, that's what they're doing. Now they're physically stronger. They're physically, you know, mentally, do you get what I'm saying? So yeah. for the kids here and this generation, they, they really have to put their foot down if they really want to succeed. And, and to, you know, you need sacrifices and it's a small sacrifice for a big game, if that makes sense. Yeah. Just touching on that, there, you know, when you're overseas, um, you talk to, talking about the physical side of the game, the mental side of the game, and in terms of how many how many hours you're training a day, whatever. What would be the breakdown in terms of uh, working on the physical aspect of the game, the technical aspect of the game, and then also the mental side of the game? Because as you said, that's very very important. If you're not mentally strong, you're not going to you're not going to get there as a as a professional footballer. So when you're over there and you're in the youth system, when you went over there in Valencia. And you want to, you know, full-time professional setup. What was sort of the breakdown in terms of that—the physical side of the game, the mental side of the game, and also the, sort of the, the uh, skill side or the um, games, game training, game style well, side of the game? Well, how did they break that down? Well, this is the th uh, this is the thing because they live and breathe football there, right? Yeah. That's 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 what they want to do. So it's kind of you know, it kind of comes in their nature to yeah. be like that. But if we're talking about um, a player like me, like an Aussie, going over there, it's a big change. So this is where you gotta you gotta figure out if you really wanted to do it or not. Because I mean the players there, as I said, they live and breathe it. They know what the, the expectations are. So it's either they go in and they go all in or they don't go in at all. <laughs> if that if, if that makes sense. So yeah. with talking about them, they know what's required. But players like us, they we want to get our youth going over there. It's you, you really, really got to, um, you really got to want it. And the thing is, it's not easy because again, you got to think about mentally, right? Um, they're not going to sign a kid from Australia if they're not just as good or better than what they got. Yeah. So that's that's a mental game. See, that, that, that's what I'm trying to say about mentally from our point of view going there. So yeah. that that's that's the differences, you know. And you're talking about physically. I mean, I lived in the Valencia complex for two, three years, or well, for a year, then lived with Isco. But then again, they base, as, as youth, they, they structure your training session. You're on the field, then you're doing double session, you're in the gym. So they, they've all structured that for you. It's all done for you. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Here, yes. you have to do it yourself. Yep. And that's the challenging thing, right? Because players, for example, you tell me now that I'm that type of player as well. Like, I never liked hard work. I never liked running i never like going to the gym but there i had to do it now i only got a, i got a choice like here you got a choice it's either you want to do it for yourself or you don't and you don't you know what i mean there's no there's no thing that's saying that you have to do this as a team we have to do this as a team there's, there's nothing like that that if that makes if that makes sense yeah so yeah. Would, would, would you say then that environment is is crucial for a young player to develop then 100 percent, 100 percent. Because if you if you're lucky enough to get in that environment, like right, there is, I'm not saying there's any excuses. It's up to you at the end of the day, but you are required to to meet their demands, or else you won't be there. Good. And what can I ask you now? Now you're sort of you know you're at the you're in the semi pro game playing at a you know a big club in the NPL that's got ambitions to be in the yeah. second division, and you've probably got many yeah. more years playing at that level. But what life lessons have you taken away from football that you kind of apply to your everyday life now um, from your career so far? Uh, see again we'll talk about see the MPL again see I think I use my disagree is my disagree but I think the again in the MPL you got great talent as well I'm, uh, I mean there's got some good young kids coming through and um, it's it's not an easy league because uh, you, you mean you get MPL teams beating A-league teams and again I'm, and I'm going off topic a bit but again you see MPL teams beating A League teams, and then you got A League coaches and scouts. They don't look at the MPL. Like why? Why? Why not give players a chance? And you know, I could I could tell you half a dozen players that that deserve the chance of being the A League. You know, and I've got we've got a player in um in our team. His name's Stevie Hewitt, right? He's he's from England, right? And he's played in the Championship in the Championship. That's a top league in in England. And he's come down here, great player, but he's like, I, I actually never, um, you know, I thought it would be easier than what it is, you know? So 
you know, again, and even though, see, this is the difference. So you got the NPL, you're, you're training, it's semi-professional three times a week. Imagine the NPL was training five days a week. Imagine it was actually professional. How much more talent will be getting through? Does that make sense? And then, you know, again, in the NPL, there's not really, yes, the players, has got good players, but again, there's no really, um, you know, a lot of professional, like I think city there is, I'm not going to go like, it's, the club's unreal. Right, yeah. we've got good facilities, but I'm turning like other clubs. There's no, you know, it's like you go to work, and then you come and train. You're tired, um, and then you, you know, then the rest of the two days of the week you don't train. You know, you go out and you live your life. It's there's no ambition really to to, to try and get to the next level, yeah. and that's you know, and I think there should be. So yeah, yeah I don't know if, if you, that that, that, make, that answer your your question. Like I hope you yeah. know. Kind of, you kind of went your own way with it. One was more about... Yeah, I did, life. I did, I did, yeah. I did. I mean, like I life did. skills that you've taken from football that help you with your day-to-day -day life, like maybe discipline or, um, you know, sacrifice hard work. Do you still use, are you still using these things now as, a, as an adult? Yeah. Of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I did, I did, I, me personally, yes, I definitely am because I've come to the point like, you know, I'm not, I'm not getting younger and I'm getting older. So if I don't put in, so I, I, at the moment for the last two, three years, I've been training five days a week myself. Yeah. Um, I mean, not all got to do with football, like run, going for runs every day, um, going to the gym every day. And I need to, as I said, how the, the football's changed, I need to do that for, so I can compete at a high level because that's just my, this is the way I am. So I, I do, I do train every day and, um, and yeah, so, I mean, you need it, you need to, you still need to be committed to play at that level as well because it's yeah. not easy. Yeah, so absolutely. yeah. And it's it's a top team, so you want to be yeah. I mean, obviously COVID interrupted it this year, but you guys are there's expectations of you guys as a team, as a club, to do well. 100%. So you put expectations on yourself to do well, yeah. And of course, of course, of course. Yeah, just um, going back, we had a discussion when I spoke to you yesterday. Going back to just before you left overseas, and you're I think you were talking, you were you on the Vic team at the time. We we're touching yeah. on some of these other young players that you're with, like Paddy Kaznova, you spoke about Alekovic, spoke about all these boys. Okay. How, um, what I'm trying to say is if you compare the youth that's coming through now in, in our system here in Australia, and we're talking about kids coming through the NPL, NPL system because you're there, and looking back at some of these boys that you, you're training with and you're working with, and they actually had a, quite a successful career as a, as a professional footballers as, as well. Mm -hmm. it, where do you compare, say, those group of boys back then compared to this generation that's coming through now? How could I explain this? So, uh, the way how things advanced now, I mean, I'll, I'll be like, imagine we got what you guys are trying to do now back then. I think there would have been even more players that went through. D does that make sense? Yep. But, and... Uh, as I said, like back then, we had the Vic team again. You had things like the VIS, you know. And the funny thing is, uh, like there was a lot, there was a lot of politics back then too. Um, you know, for for example, I never got I, I never got a scholarship for the VIS, but then again, I got signed at Valencia, so I, I don't <laughs> I don't know how that that works. But um, but, but yeah, like I mean, how how what things are trying to what you guys are trying to achieve now? If we had that back then, then I'm then I, I'm I guarantee there would have been a lot more players coming through and again the, the football's changed so it's really hard to tell like uh, the football's changing in terms of it's more demanding now so kids are more focusing on how to be physically more demanding than actually focusing on football so like it's got a couple of different things a couple of different things that you know that have changed so it's really hard to, to say what could have happened or what can happen you know yeah. what is the um in your in your opinion moving forward with your life um i mean away from football when you've end up stopping playing the actual game what are your like yeah. how, how do you want plan on staying involved through coaching or uh, have you got an idea for a different career pathway when you finish up no I've, i would always love to you know to be with football whether being a coach um an assistant coach a technical director um you know a scout or any, anything to do with football I'd, I'd be involved you know like i haven't made that decision yet because i'm still playing at the moment i still i think i still got a few years left in me yeah, yeah. um but um but yeah i've always i always be involved whatever i can no matter what it is being an assistant coach coach director you know being part of a club 
um, helping out. So again, I also got ambitions to go back overseas and 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 try to do something there because I, I speak four languages. You know, I got the I was lucky to to learn languages. You know, so and I, I know of a lot of people over there as well. So maybe that could be an option in the future. Me going back there, um, learning off these people and. You know, so it's good that I had that experience to learn these languages because I want to always have them for the rest of my life. Yeah, so that's incredible. That's awesome. So you got yeah. Greek, yeah. Italian, English, and Spanish, yeah? Mm -hmm. Down Spanish, yeah. Awesome. yeah. That's right, yeah. So that gives you but half just... of Europe covered. You're sorted. <laughs> yeah, exactly right. <laughs> and and well, South America? Even, yeah. yeah, yeah, South America. Even like, um, you know, even going into Asia, there's got a lot of, you know, Spanish coaches coaching in Asia and bringing Spanish players and even things like that, even being a translator, you know, anything to do with football, I'd love to be involved in the future. I'll never want to, that, that's, that's always been my passion and dream, you know. You could ask Mr. Cataforis over here how good I was at school and I'll just touch on, I'll just touch on that for the, for the boys. Oh, I was going to ask um, my next question. Actually, I'll, I'll just touch on that for the boys. Look, I'm going to be quite honest here. I, I actually regret not, not excelling in my schooling because at the end of the day, I don't, I don't have a degree in anything. I really don't. Um, I've, you know, I've had ups and downs in my career and I could tell you from now that it doesn't all work out. You know, yes, you can have your dreams, which is good. You want to work hard, but you know, things could go wrong. I mean, things went wrong for me. I had bad manage, like even with football. So you understand a lot of managers try to get involved. This is a whole big, other side of the story of football so that's what i'm saying you know like i wasn't i could have been a good student but i wasn't the best student if that if that makes sense and um if i could go back 12 years ago i'd certainly do things differently yeah and that was my yeah. question i was going to allude to you. You, you you can you can balance your education with your football can't you, course, yeah. look, you look uh, what i'm trying to get at is you can balance it right but you, you can't it's no good to be a robot either you gotta, you gotta have some sort of life as well. You can have your fun. There's no, there's nothing wrong with having fun. There's nothing wrong, you know. You just, as you said, um, it's all about balance. And if you're committed in balancing everything, then I think it's a good thing because if you just decide to be a robot, I mean, mentally, you know, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna break down, and that could, that could cause, cause problems. Yeah, so yeah, you, you've sort of identified that you, you obviously you love the game. Yeah, it's still like when you were a little kid. And yeah, I guess what I we try, to, like, yeah. yeah, well we try to explain to kids these days that if you fall in love with the game, then it's okay then to focus on your studies and your soccer because your soccer is your love and your passion. And the other yes. things that you can do later, like you know going out and partying and that sort of stuff, because you can still oh, do but that later on. Yeah, yeah, that that comes in there. And there's nothing wrong with doing that. You know, you have to you have to live your life. But yeah. as you said, you know, your your passion and your love for the game is one thing. And I mean, it's it's it just it's just a benefit to have something something else. Yeah. As much as you, I, I didn't want anything else back then, and that was a mistake. Well, that's all I wanted, and then it it backfired really. But I mean, it, it's only benefiting yourself if you have an education behind you. Like you know, you know what I mean. So you got both sides. And yeah. as a kid, you don't think about the look. As a, as a as a student, I could I could understand how they are. You don't think about the future. You really don't. Mm. But then when you come to my age, and you think, shit, I should have thought. I thought I should have thought about it. Yeah. So this is something that you have to implement in the, in the students because they're going to face real reality. You know, in five ten years time. Yeah. So it's either you, you put the hard working now, and you'll have the last laugh later in the future. I guess. Yeah. A good point. I was going to ask you one, one last one from my point of view, and it's it's tied to that what you just said. Now, um, the kids, from what we understood when we were in Spain uh, in January, the kids are like you said, come straight from school, do their training session, go home, repeat. Um, and from what we understood from the clubs that we spoke to, the education side of it's huge for them because they they give them reality checks very early. Even at Real Madrid, when our kids were training, they were saying to them, guys, you've got to focus on your school because. Soccer's it's a one in a million type of thing. And do you, did you find that the Spanish kids were a bit more realistic to sometimes us here because we're so far away? Maybe we think we're closer than we actually are in terms of ability. Yeah, yeah, hundred uh, percent. You hit you hit the nail there. Um, again, see, I, I, you could ask Mister Catafors. I was never a school person. You know, I, I when I went overseas, I completely wanted to to not do school at all. But I had to go. <laughs> you know what I mean? I had to I had to go to school. Like there was a must. It's a must. 
and you have to and unless for example the the odd case with um isco was that at that age of 16 years old he was breaking to the first team so he had to miss school yeah that's just a one-off case but he still completed it though that's that's the thing so he still yeah. did it right he still finished his the lowest like for example i would say year 12 he finished year 12 yeah and yeah. that's still an achievement right yeah, yeah absolutely um but then again so he even worked harder because even though he missed school a lot of times because the first team they would train in the mornings he'll still make up for it so there's there you go of like how 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 they make you do that as well you know what i mean so you have to work twice as harder because you have to train in the mornings and finish school on his own with not being there if that, if that makes sense yeah yeah it's that's the sacrifice so, yeah that's the reality of it isn't it if you want to reach the top over in europe yeah so yeah so i mean um, a lot of the a lot of the boys there that are playing professionally they've got the minimum in clients of schooling which is basically only year 12 and oh, yep. i mean that's yeah so they're not they're educated yeah yeah that's good it's good that's I, great, I, I, I mean, we, we, were, we were quite impressed by that we kind of knew it from what we'd read but when you sit down and I mean, you would have seen it there they would have told you the exact same thing yeah. exactly not yeah and and they told us how hard it is for these guys to make it as good as a lot of their players were they said to us there yeah. might be one out of these 23 these were 16 year olds that makes the first team maybe one well the, yeah see in my case it was different i mean we had a we had a super team right that yeah. was a one off but as you said you know one or two players out of that that you, you know 23 but we'll get there mm -hmm. i was just lucky enough to play with great players well five six of them did yeah you know but as you as you're right and uh, it's only one or two and look how good everyone else is as well do you yeah. get what i'm saying even yeah. for all those 23 kids that are athletic and madrid they're all good yeah. <laughs> you know what i mean we saw that like, they're, not having, they're, yeah. they're all good so imagine the competition and as i touched before see for kids for us to go over there we just have to be just as good because why would they waste their time and money on some, bringing someone there for just the sake of it, no, yeah. because they could get another one of you in th in two minutes. <laughs> Does that make sense? Yeah. So, yeah, it's yeah. You're, 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 well. The thing you said early on in the interview was it's their culture; they live and breathe it, and that means 100%. there's more there to choose from. I live and breathe. I could tell you, you know, when when I used to see the under sevens, you should have seen the under six. They started at six years old. There, they they have a team of eight, whatever eight eight year old or six year olds, right? And for each team, they have two coaches, not just one. They want to have two coaches, and they're teaching them the philosophy of, of playing out from the back from there. Yeah, it, it, you know, playing out, passing the ball. There's no selfishness. You know, like yeah, you have your good player up front that will score goals, like we have everywhere. But yeah. it was like a team thing. Like everyone knew their spot. Like from that age, they knew that you're a defender. You you're playing right back, left back, center mid, and the way they they train them and the kids listened more like here yeah it's all fun and game like yeah just go out and play and have fun which is which is fine but this is a difference there they learn how to be disciplined from that age yeah and um, in terms of, and having the right coaches so imagine like you're a coach of a, a under sevens team and you're doing like i wouldn't say tactics but you're teaching them how to play football not to pass the ball from here to there because they, they 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 grow up they, they really know that yeah you know we're yeah. teaching our kids how to pass the ball how to do a throw in which are there they're teaching them how to play out from the back and how to play football you know so that's another it's another difference there yeah it's a big it's a big one there so, you're talking to your 16 year old self 12 years ago what would yeah. you say to him what question what would i say i could say a lot of, I could say a lot of things. <laughs> PG, PG version, like, yeah. one of those things where you know i because don't look i'm going to be honest I, I did some things that weren't, weren't the, the right thing either i'm not going to get into that yep. um I, I did some things i, I want bad things but I'll, i you know i'll give you a little example when i was at for example at you know coming from overseas back to australia at victory i thought i was a superstar i thought i was a king and you know and i was 21 years old and i'm i'm sitting there signing autographs and taking photos and that got a bit to my head really did and that sort of set me back um what i'll say to myself now uh, you know that will come just you know focus more on your football instead of the fame if that make if that makes sense Perfect because sense. once you it, it, it's when you experience that that sort of thing you know it, it does get to your head and you you know and i was as a young star you think you know i'm the king now you know i'm everyone loves me yeah but i'll, I'll certainly change that now that's something i'll tell myself like 
you know, establish yourself first, work hard, don't worry about that. That will come. Yes, it's all fun and game, but that that will come and, you know, do the right things and be a bit more I would say I'm more committed now in terms of training wise than what I was back then. Not not well, talking about Valencia or anything like that, coming yeah, yeah. back to Australia. Yeah. Right. Um, my mentality's changed a bit in terms of, you know, like I just I did like having a lot of fun. I did, that's the truth. And that's something I would say, you know, like that will come, you know, if you focus more on, on, on your ability and focus more on your training, really. Yeah. So, yeah. Awesome advice, man. I love it. Awesome. We, look, I, I really like, really thank you for, um, for nah, that I want to thank you for coming it, on board. Well, yeah, no, you know what? I can't wait to come see you guys there, man. We'll have a coffee, you know, we'll, you know, I'd love to walk around the school, even, you know, <laughs> see what's oh, changed, you know. Yeah, you can.